Today, I'm gonna to take this cheap contractor saw and make it as accurate and as capable as a professional cabinet saw. And I'm gonna do this as simple as possible so you can follow along. We're gonna make a full stand for this, but the first two things you gotta do is get rid of the stock blade and the miter gauge that came with the saw. I'm using a Freud Thin Curve 50 tooth combination blade. Nearly any aftermarket blade will work. Just make sure you're getting a combination blade. A combination blade allows for clean cross cuts and rips. For the miter gauge, I'm using this Winu Tools. I got this for $129 on Amazon. There are cheaper ones and much, much more expensive ones, but any aftermarket miter gauge is gonna be so much better than the one that came with your saw. We've upgraded the blade, we've upgraded the miter gauge. Now we need to make a mobile base. This is a small shop, so I need to be able to move the saw around. I also need a little bit more outfeed support and side support. This base that it's on right now, it's a little too tall. It's not very comfortable. I'm going to fix that. The mobile base also needs to hold a shop vac that is always connected to the table saw, and that's just going to make things quicker and easier and it's going to help this saw work like a big saw like what we have over at the fancy shop we are not working with plans today and there won't be plans for this stand because every table saw is going to be different i want to show you how to make something that's going to work with your particular saw we're going to use nothing but three quarter inch plywood I got some of the fancy three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. You can get the cheap stuff from Home Depot, Menards, Lowe's, whatever you want. I like my working height of my table saw to be about 34.75 inches. That is to taste, but that is the height of my other saw. I ordered the mobile base off of Amazon. It doesn't say how much height it adds, but it looks to be about an inch. So there's gonna be a wheel there and then a bottom base here. So it looks like there is about one inch here. I'm using three quarter inch wood here. We're gonna have another sheet of plywood up top. This is the side profile. That is going to be three quarters of an inch tall. And then the table saw is 13.75 inches tall. I want all of this to be 34.75. That means these legs right here are 18.5 inches. So one inch plus three quarters of an inch plus 18 and a half inches plus three quarters of an inch plus 13.75 equals 34.75. I need to make eight legs that are 18 and a half inches tall by two and a half inches wide. I'm gonna make my first cut here at the track saw and then do the rest at the table saw. Wanted to do the whole thing with the table saw, but a four by eight sheet is just too big until we get some in feed and some out feed and some side supports. So this is made by Bora. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but this is mobile. It expands and I can throw a sheet of insulation on top of that, throw my plywood on top of that. And it's just a nice little big workbench that I can move out of the way because it all condenses nice and small and I can throw that in the corner when not needed. This is my adjustable height workbench and I'm just going to bring this up to a, a height to use this as an outfit table. Recommended if you have a small shop. Also, also, that first cut that I made to make this smaller, I totally mismeasured and cut it in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna have, ugh. I already made a mistake on step one, first but cut first cut of the day. First cut of the day never counts. We have the eight pieces for our legs cut and now we're going to do this little L shape here and I'm going to glue and brad nail them together. The brad nails aren't necessary. They're just going to work as clamps while the glue dries. And so using the brad nails will allow me to move on to the next step without having to wait for the glue to dry. I'll go on there just like that. There we go. Oh man. <laughs> 
My air compressor is dying. Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, it just died. Ah. So I went ahead and cut eight stretchers and that's gonna go in there just like this. One on the bottom, one on the top, and then the same thing with the other three sides. And again, glue and brad nails. Quick and dirty. And now glue the long stretchers on here. We have an issue with the other two stretchers right here. If I attach them right now, I won't be able to get the shop vac in the table. So I don't think I'm gonna use any glue. I'm just gonna temporarily screw them together so I can remove them to get the shop vac in there later. I'm so glad I'm so glad I realized that before finishing this up. It would have ruined my day. Ah, uh, the problem with corded tools. Now we cut the top and the bottom, same exact size. One for the top, one for the bottom. So this is upside down and this is the bottom and it's going to get screwed into the assembly. I don't have my mobile base that's supposed to get here in a couple of days and I need to avoid where that's going to be attached. So I'm just going to screw right into the stretchers and I'm gonna pre-drill just in case so I don't split the stretchers out. Corded drills are so freaking powerful, it's scary. All right, so I flipped it over, and now this will be the top. Sorry about your ears. It looks so low, but when I get the table saw on here, it's gonna be the perfect height. And that's gonna go on there like that. Woo. That's a much better height. And it's gonna come up about an inch or so once we get that mobile base on there. And then this, in theory, will fit in here. Yes, yes, yes. And also gonna have a lot more storage in there too. Now I can drop the cord through there, almost. That's my biggest bit. All right, we'll force it in there. Everything is looking really good. I need to make an outfeed table and I'm basically just gonna make a five-sided box without a bottom that's just gonna sit right on here. But to do so, I also have to drill a hole for the hose to get down to the shop back. So I got a hole saw, gonna drill a hole here, and then we're gonna make a box with a hinge lid where I can also store stuff. Whew! There we go. We have the portholes, portals. We have the portals cut for the dust collection hose. To make this box, I'm gonna use pocket hole screws. That's going to be the quickest and easiest way for me to do so. So I'm just gonna drill a couple pocket holes on each one of these pieces and pocket hole together. 
So we've got all our pocket holes drilled. You could probably just screw and drill from the side and avoid the pocket holes, but the pocket holes is just quicker and easier. So now I'm gonna add glue to all the edges. So I got that clamped together so I can screw it together. Have to have the pocket holes on the outside because there's no way to get my drill in on the inside. It's, a, it's shop furniture. Visible pocket holes is the sign of a good craftsman. Also, I decided to stop using the corded drill. I, I just feel like this thing is going to take my life. It's way, way too powerful and scary every time I use it and way too fast. And this is gonna go on here like this. Because this whole stand is 48 inches wide, the width of a piece of plywood, this scrap is the perfect width and it's gonna make a great outfeed table that overhangs. We're gonna have it hinge on the back so it opens up to get to the storage. And if I wanna butt this up against the wall, I can hinge this up to make it take up less of a footprint. And it is just below the surface. So apparently we measured correctly. So I'm just gonna add a piano hinge. We'll put one on this side and then we'll put one on this side as well. Now I just need to attach this to the base and I'm just gonna put some screws on the bottom here. I have never had this happen before, but I got a bunch of these, these bit drivers. I think they're from Harbor Freight, but I can't be 100% certain. I've, it broke, it, just screwing it into the box, it broke. What? Just normal use. So any kind of sled, jig, or miter gauge, is going to hit the lid. So what I need to do is we're going to route a little groove right there. I got a straight bit in my router and then a guide clamp to the top here. This is going to take multiple passes. So I got to do two passes, then move the fence over and then do another two passes and then do the same with the other side. We got those miter slots cut, and now all of our jigs are going to have full range of motion. We're gonna build our side supports. Again, super simple boxes that are gonna be attached to the table. But instead of hinge lids, they're gonna be cubby holes that's going to allow me to put in my fence on one side and then jigs on the other side so I can access them from the back. Super simple, box, screw it down, good to go. And then this is going to go on here like this. Got to make sure we got clearance for our fence. We have clearance, Clarence. That is looking so good. It's all one big unit. All my clearances are perfect. There's room for my jigs to run through. The outfeed table and the wings are just slightly lower than the table saw, so nothing interferes. We got that mobile base on there. It was missing a couple parts. I think it's gonna work fine. I just have to make a couple of washers that were missing. So I'm not sure if I can recommend it or not recommend it yet, but I'll link to it down below. Up next, we are going to make what might be the most important jig you may ever make as a woodworker. But first, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is the Woodworkers Guild of America. This is a full circle moment for me because when I got started in woodworking, I bought this set of DVDs from the Woodworkers Guild of America. My success as a woodworker started right here. I don't even think they sell this anymore. It was so long ago. But thanks to the internet and technology, 
you can just stream it right on your computer. This is going to blow your mind, but you can become a member for only $1.49 for the first year. And what you get for $1.49 is absolutely incredible. Tons of well-produced woodworking videos for the beginner and advanced. You might argue that there's already all kinds of free tutorials right here on YouTube, but the Woodworkers Guild of America videos, they don't have ads, they are not made to please an algorithm, and they are professionally made. The main host, George Von Druska, has been an inspiration of mine for many years. I know when I watch one of his videos, there's no fluff or filler, nothing but valuable information to make me a better woodworker. They've got videos as simple as making miter slot guides, which is appropriate for the sled we're about to make, all the way up to advanced table saw techniques like cutting circles on the table saw, something I've never learned to do myself. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a full premium membership for only $1.49 for the first year. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. My journey started with the Woodworkers Guild of America. Now, the most important jig you may ever make as a woodworker is a crosscut sled for your table saw. For many, many years, I did not have a miter saw and did all my crosscuts at the table saw with a sled. The sled allows you to crosscut wider pieces than you normally would with just a miter gauge. It also allows for repeatable pieces because you can have stops on there. It is the most important jig you will make as a woodworker. We are gonna do it simple and dirty. I went ahead and cut the base of the sled so I'm gonna put my runners in the tracks here and they are sticking up above the surface just a little bit, which is good. And get them lined up and I'm gonna use some CA glue. Set this right on top. And we'll just let that dry for a sec. We got that all sanded to a high grit. Now we're gonna add some wax, just so it uh, runs in those grooves nice and slick-like. Normally, I put screws in here, and I'm still going to, I just don't have screws right now. And the screws will reinforce the bond between the pieces there. And there's a chance when I put screws in there that it's, the wood's gonna spread out a little bit, and I might have to sand the edges a little bit more. Oh yeah, that's nice. For the fence, I'm gonna use this Craig track for a couple of reasons. One is I can have a stop on there. You don't need it for the stop. You could just clamp on a block of wood, but this is perfectly straight. So if there's any bow to the board at all, when I screw this onto the board, it's gonna take that bow right out. I'm actually gonna use two pieces of plywood, one that's longer and then one that's shorter that's going to sit behind there like that. And then that will get screwed into our sled. Glue on the back part of the fence, make it nice and thick. I've gone ahead and created a kerf in there not going all the way to the back. And I'm gonna set my fence on here and I'm gonna put one screw in on this side so I can pivot to get it squared up. All right, so that screw is in there. Now our fence should pivot around that screw. So I'm just gonna use the square to square this up in the past, I have done the overkill five cut method. Just using a square to the blade has worked great for me for the past few years. So I got that squared up and I'm just gonna run another screw in from this side. I'm gonna check my squareness here. I don't think we can get any better than that. So I'm just gonna put a few more screws in. 
Now that I got my fence on there, I can cut all the way through. I don't put the front fence on there in case I have a board that's bigger than my sled. So it can overhang this way and I can come way out here and cut that. Now, it makes the whole sled less sturdy. I have done that with the last couple sleds that I've made and it has worked perfectly fine for many years. Maybe, just maybe this might break in the future. If it does, I know a halfway decent woodworker. His name is Dan. He runs the camera. So I can throw on the stop, tighten it down. It's got a little flippy flip flip and I can make precise cross cuts. So there are a few more upgrades we could do. We could make a zero clearance insert here so small pieces don't fall through the crack. I need to make a small part sled, which is a lot like the big sled that we made, but much smaller and a clamp built in to keep our hands away from the blade when cutting small pieces. And because we're in a one car garage, space is premium. So I'm going to cut a hole in here and drop a router table lift right in there. And then we can also use our fence from the table saw with the router table. I wanna make a bigger wooden paddle off switch so it makes it easier to shut this off with my knee. With all of these upgrades, this makes the saw just as accurate and as capable as my big professional cabinet saw at the other shop. The one thing that I don't like is the fence. It still feels cheap. And with the rack and pinion gearing on here, it makes it really, really hard to dial in, especially when like you're cutting to fit. It moves so much with just a slight little turn. So it's hard to get that tiny, tiny little movement and knock it in place. I am not aware, but if you know of an aftermarket fence for contractor saws, let us all know. This will get me by but it's just, it takes a lot longer to dial in that precision. I will have a playlist of nothing but simple projects right here. That is gonna wrap it up. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. It didn't roll as far as I wanted it to. And make something. Good enough.